I'm reviewing The Haunting of Bly Manor and I've got a lot of emotions. <laughs> Twisted people, it's your twisted girl next door here, Chauncey K. Robinson, and today I am reviewing The Haunting of Bly Manor, spoiler free. I'm giving you my pros, cons, trigger warnings, my twisted final grade, and my emotional carnage damage report, aka how is this piece of content going to make you feel? The Haunting of Bly Manor tells the story of what happens after a nanny's tragic death where an uncle hires a young American nanny to care for his orphan niece and nephew who reside at Bly Manor, with the chef Owen, groundskeeper Jamie, and housekeeper Hannah. The series is loosely based on Henry James' work, particularly his 1898 novella, The Turn of the Screw. The Haunting of Bly Manor is a follow-up series to The Haunting of Hill House and the second entry in the Haunting Anthology series. Seeing as this is a follow-up to the super popular Haunting of Hill House series, there's going to be a lot of comparison. So, of course, I can't give this review without comparing it somewhat. But don't worry, even if you haven't watched The Haunting of Hill House, this is spoiler-free. And I'm just more so going to be possibly referring to some of the difference in aesthetic and storytelling when it comes between the two series. But I do think Bly Manor stands all on its own when it comes to being a pretty good entry in The Haunting series. This is a quality ghost story. I think that's like my biggest pro about this series. This is a quality ghost story. And, you know, depending on the kind of subgenre of horror you like, you may or may not like that. Or you may have a different opinion about what a ghost story entails. To me, it entails ghosts. And what that also means is that ghosts aren't always going to be killing people or constantly or jumping out constantly and something. There's something about a, a good quality ghost story that kind of creates an atmosphere where it's like there's things you can't see, there's things you feel, there's a certain mood around the place in which the haunting is occurring. And I think Bly Manor does a really good job of creating a ghost story where there's history. That's the thing about ghosts, right? It's not just like, you know, an actual being. It's the ghost of the past, right? The ghost of the present. And I think that's what Bly Manor does so good in the symbolism. There is earned plot development. Can we give a hand for earned plot development? Because we all know there are times when whether it be a series, whether it be a movie, where things kind of happen and you're like, you did not earn that. This character didn't earn this fi these feelings for this character. This moment didn't really have an emotional payoff because I didn't care about this person, so on and so forth. And that's what I mean by an earned development, where things build up, where when they finally happen or a twist finally occurs or a turn in the plot, it's like, okay, that makes sense. That didn't just blindside me and then expect me to just kind of accept it. Creepy vibe is all around in this show. And this is where you have to kind of compare it to The Haunting of Hill House for those who have watched it. One of the one of the cool things about the Haunting series or what happened with The Haunting of Hill House is that in every background there was some sort of figure, a ghost of some sort. And that's not like spoiler. That's just you would notice it when you were watching, like someone would just be walking. And it wasn't like how previous films and other things have done it where if there's a ghost they're about to jump out and the person might become aware of them right no what would happen is that there would just be a ghost down the hall and you just be like whoa there's a ghost there and no one would would acknowledge it and that would just be so creepy because you're like you're sitting here you're trying to pay attention to the dialogue but you're also like is no one understanding that there's some type of ghost by the cupboard or and is that just me you know what i mean just kind of messing with your senses which i really appreciated about the haunting of hill house and Bly Manor also does that in a way, I would say maybe not as much. It's not m m there as much. It's kind of in the beginning, kind of tapers off towards the later episodes. But it does kind of give a call back to Haunting of Hill House by having certain entities in the background, which just add to the overall creepy atmosphere. But I would also say... The creepy atmosphere in Bly Manor are the emotions of the characters, the offness 
of how people are feeling, the secrets that people hold. I think that also adds to the creepy vibe as well. The jump scares are kind of low. This is not a jump scare series. Now, once again, to compare it to Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Hill House wasn't a jump scare series either. I know if you compare it, I would say that there are a few more, whoa, kind of moments in Haunting of Hill House than necessarily Bly Manor. But for anyone who might try to say this was a less scary film than or series than Haunting of Hill House, I, I don't really think you can really compare it in this way. I think Bly Manor is not necessarily a jump scare, oh my gosh, there's a dead body or something, a whole bunch of times type of moment type of series. It's not that kind of series. It's, it's more so the storytelling itself will haunt you. You know, the story itself is what is haunting, not necessarily the moment to moment situation. It's the culmination of everything that happens that's truly haunting about the haunting of Bly Manor. So with that said, I do know some people like their horror series and films to have a lot more jumpy kind of moments. And that is not the case when it comes to the haunting of Bly Manor, a, a lot less than the haunting of Hill House too. Now, what I will say is a definite con is the slow build. All right. So the first maybe three episodes, not a lot happens, like at all, really. It's kind of like things start to kind of creep out, but not a lot happens. This is a real stark contrast, if you ask me, to The Haunting of Hill House, where things started happening, like significant things, like the first and second episode. And The Haunting of Blind Manor wasn't so much that. The Haunting of Blind Manor took about, I would say it was the fifth episode. I mean, I stuck with it because I thought it was good storytelling. But in terms of where I thought the frightening parts were going to start coming in, it took a minute to get there. So it has a very slow build. So you have to be willing to go on this journey. But I would kind of consider that a con because I feel like they didn't necessarily have to wait to the fifth episode for some of the things to get put out there for the audience. The two trigger warnings for this series is a reference to child abuse and also reference to suicide in a way. So those are definitely two trigger warnings for this series. The emotional carnage damage report is heavy. It is a lot. You will cry. I have cried. If you didn't cry, if you don't cry, I want to do a like a cry challenge for this series. I want people to watch it and tell me how you did not have water coming on your face somehow from the tears coming out of your eyes because this is, it's sad. It's a sad um, show <laughs> to a certain degree. It's a sad show, but it also gives you hope. It's really weird. It's like, you know, it deals with the, the very true human condition. You know, that's one of the things I say about the Haunting series. Like, Haunting of Hill House did the same thing. It was a very true human condition. I would say the theme in Haunting of Hill House was family, was the dysfunction of family, of family ties. And I would say with Blind Manor, it was more so love and romantic relationships and the way those things can be haunting and terrifying. And with that said, it's... It's a love story. That's the subgenre of this series for sure. It's a horror love stories. And it's very sad. You will cry. So if you're not in the mood to cry, I would say maybe pace this out and just be prepared because it's a lot. Because it doesn't it's not just about what happens to the characters necessarily. And I'm not saying it ends depressingly. It's it's there's a difference between sad and depressing, right? Thank you, Midsummer. Uh, what this is, it's more so it's sad in the sense that, you know, it's, it's things happen that aren't necessarily happy, but there's a hope within it. And I would say that's great. But I also say if you're in for something that doesn't necessarily make you think about the human condition and love and loss, then you might want to not run to watch this series. My twisted final grade for The Haunting of Bly Manor is a B plus. And just as a note, which one do I think is better, The Haunting of Hill House or The Haunting of Bly Manor? 
I don't really think you can compare them. I don't know that is not a cop-out answer. I really just don't think you can compare them. They're two totally different series. Which one I enjoyed more? I would say maybe The Haunting of Hill House was more my pace than The Haunting of Bly Manor, but I truly did enjoy The Haunting of Bly Manor as well. Okay, Twisted People, that is my spoiler-free review of The Haunting of Bly Manor. What did you think? Did it make you cry? Do you want to join my cry challenge? I challenge you to watch this series and not cry at the end. And let me know. Comment down below. Let me know if you cried at the end, how it made you feel. What did you think is better, The Haunting of Hill House or The Haunting of Bly Manor? Let me know. Comment down below. And also, be sure to subscribe so you will know the first time when I post any of my horror reviews and my emotional carnage damage reports. Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together.